Hello friends, welcome to new student lecture video from Subhas Biology and in this class we will study about Fupara. As you know, it is the intestinal nematode or intestinal parasite and in this class we will study about the details about this Fupara. So, the main two important species of this Fupara are the Ancyclostoma duodenal and the second one is the Nicator americanus. But, before going in detail about this topic, if you are new to my channel, then subscribe to my channel for new updates and don't forget to like, share and comment in the YouTube box so that I will be inspired to make more videos on this. So now we will start with this hookworm. So this hookworm or the scientific name is the Ancyclostoma duodenal. We will discuss this Ancyclostoma duodenal in long. So now we will start. So first of all, in this class we will discuss about what is hookworm. What are its types and what are the signs and symptoms, symptoms of hookworm and what is its life cycle and the treatment and its prevention. So now start. What is hookworm? Hookworm is the intestinal parasite or the intestinal nematode that lives in the intestine of human. And it is the main important cause of iron deficiency anemia in humans. Right? Now, if we will move to the habitat, it lives in the, as I have already discussed, it lives in the intestine of humans. And now we will move to how it is spread, how it is transmitted from one person to another person. Means first we have to learn, first we have to learn the life cycle of hookworm, Ancyclostoma duodenal, and thereafter we will get that how this is infected, the, the, it is transmitted from one person to another person, right? Now we will study the life cycle of Ancyclostoma duodenal. Like all other life cycle, it is also very easy because it has only one host, one definitive host and that is the human. So no intermediate host is there. Then question must be arising in your mind that if there is only one host, then how it can be transmitted to one person to another? It is very easy through fecal matter. Because as you know, nowadays the technology has developed, people, people are getting more literate. But uh, before that, people are somewhat Ill illiterate and they are going, they defecates outside, they defecates outdoor. So actually what happens, when the infected person or the infected human defecates outside, then what happens, the fecal matter contain the eggs of the, this hookworm or the Ancyclostoma duodenal, it gets into the soil and there it hatches out. It may be, it, it, molting takes place there. Now what happens, uh, second, third, uh, likewise molting happens there. And from four to six weeks after, it uh, remains at the that infective stage and it hatches out to form the rhabditive form larva. So this is the rhabditive form larval stages now in the, inside the soil. So actually what happens, when the people, uh, the illiteral people, um, thereafter, uh, they work barefoot. So what happens there? When the soil interacts with the unbroken skin of humans, they enter into the skin of humans. It's common, more common. So what happens there? This hookworm, the eggs of the hookworm enter penetrates. The more appropriate word is the penetrate. So the this hookworm penetrates into the unbroken skin of the humans. And there, the life cycle starts from here. What happens there? It enters into the skin of humans. And then, the people are at risk. Means, when the pe people living in warmer, moist areas, they, when they walk barefoot, they, the soil containing eggs of hookworm penetrates into the skin of the humans. And then enter into the subcutaneous tissues. And then into the lymphatics. Or the lymphatic venules. From where it gets into the right side of the heart and then it enters into the pulmonary capillaries and and breaks and enters to the alveolar spaces of lungs and their alveolar spaces and then it enters the bronchi, bronchioles, trachea and then from trachea it moves into the larynx and then it migrates through and crawls over the epiglottis region and then in the esophagus it moves to the finally at the intestine and it reaches there and forms and become adult thereafter after some days so what happens there they are said they mature they reproduce and uh, they mature and they lay eggs so these eggs they finally 
वंस अगेन द साइकिल इज रिपीटेड दे अदर फिकल मैटर कंटेनिंग एग्स आर मूव्ड आउटसाइड इनटू द सॉइल हाउ व्हेन द पीपल आर व्हेन द पीपल डेफिकेट्स आउटसाइड द होम और आउटडोर और आउटसाइड सो देयर द एग रीचेस इनटू द सॉइल एंड द सॉइल इज आल्सो इंफेक्टेड द साइंस एंड सिम्टम्स ऑफ दिस हुपर डिजीज एंड दैट इज द फर्स्ट साइन फर्स्ट इंफेक्शन it has itching and local rash is often seen in case of the first infection or uh, within 1 to 3 days right so this is the first sign of infection in case of hookworm disease so what happens in case of heavy infection what happens abdominal pain diarrhea weight loss fatigue anemia these are the uh, these are the cases or these are the symptoms seen in case of heavy infections so now the question arises how we should diagnose how we should diagnose this hookworm disease so by taking stool sample uh, in a mic by taking a stool sample we can detect the eggs or the larval stages of the hookworm in the microscope so finally prevention is better than cure so how should we prevent how can we prevent this hookworm disease by not walking barefoot obviously in the soil and not defecating outside so these are the preventions we can take to avoid this hookworm disease hookworm infections are generally treated with 1 to 3 days of medically prescription but in case of iron deficiency anemia patient we can give them iron supplements so this is all about the hence i used to my duodenal or the hookworm